Island, in Baines Johnson, do solemnly swear. I, Richard Bilhouse Nixon, do solemnly swear. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. I, William Jefferson Clinton, do solemnly swear. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. It is my duty to the American people to report that renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. I had no prior knowledge of the Watergate break-in. I neither took part in nor knew about any of the subsequent cover-up activities. A charge has been made that the United States has shipped weapons to Iran as ransom payment for the release of American hostages in Lebanon. That the United States undercut its allies and secretly violated American policy against trafficking with terrorists. Those charges are utterly false. As long as there is breath in this body, I will speak and work, strive and struggle for the cause of the Nicaraguan freedom fighters. Freedom fighters, they are not. They are terrorists. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false. The British government has learned that Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. Part of the reason we went into Iraq uh, was uh, the main reason we went into Iraq. Uh, I have said repeatedly that I intend to close Guantanamo and I will follow through on that. Uh, I've said repeatedly that America doesn't torture and I'm going to make sure that we don't torture. And I'll finally end the abuse of no-bid contracts once and for all. The days of sweetheart deals for Halliburton will be over when I'm in the White House. We'll finally end the abuse of no-bid contracts once and for all. The days of sweetheart deals for Halliburton and the like will be over when I'm in the White House. The way Bush has done it over the last eight years is to take out a credit card from the Bank of China in the name of our children driving up our national debt from five trillion dollars for the first 42 presidents number 43 added four trillion dollars by his lonesome so that we now have over nine trillion dollars of debt that, that we are going to have to pay back thirty thousand dollars for every man woman and child that's irresponsible it's unpatriotic i am absolutely confident uh, that we can choose our own economic destiny. We can choose another four years with the same reckless fiscal policies that George Bush has implemented, taking our national debt from five trillion to over nine trillion dollars in the span of ten, uh, eight years, uh, mortgaging our children's future on a mountain of debt, or we can restore some fiscal responsibility in Washington. We can, yes we can. I mean, the debt ceiling, that's a, that's a formality. 
historically, this has not even been an issue. It's an unpleasant vote, but it's been a routine vote that Congress does periodically. The truth is, is that uh, compared to other countries around the world, our deficit problems are completely manageable. And I could not get uh, Republicans to go ahead and say, you're right, we're going to put country ahead of party. The last thing we should do is raise taxes on the middle class. You will not see your taxes increase one single dime. You will not see your taxes increase a single dime. I repeat, not one single dime. And under this mandate, the government is forcing people to spend money, fining you if you don't. How is that not a tax? Because when I'm president, meetings where laws are written will be more open to the public, no more secrecy. That's a commitment I make to you as president. I'll make our government open and transparent so that anyone can ensure that our business is the people's business. But these negotiations will be on C-SPAN. Uh, and so the public will be part of the conversation. We're going to do all these negotiations on C-SPAN. So the American people will be able to watch these negotiations. You know, I respect the fact that Senator Clinton uh, and President Clinton uh, attempted in 93 to get health care reform passed. Uh, but I, I do think that they did it in the wrong way because it was behind closed doors and we did not enlist the American people in the process. The when there's a bill that ends up on my desk as president, you, the public, will have five days to look online and find out what's in it before I sign it. So that you know what your government's doing. When Let me say it as simply as I can. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. Back since taking office, this has been the administration that's prosecuted more whistleblowers in two years than in the preceding 40 years that meets with lobbyists across the street from the White House so they don't have to disclose their meeting with lobbyists and, this is true, censored nearly 200 pages of internal emails about their efforts to make government more transparent. That means no more illegal wiretapping of American citizens. No more national security letters to spy on citizens who are not suspected of a crime. No more tracking citizens who do nothing more than protest a misguided war. No more ignoring the law when it is inconvenient. When Congress offers you a bill, do you promise not to use presidential signage to get your way? Yes. <laughs> I believe in the Constitution and I will obey the Constitution of the United States. We're not going to use signing statements as a way of doing an end run around Congress. All right? We have a responsibility to act. That's what's happened in Libya over the course of these last six weeks. The biggest problems that we're facing right now have to do with George Bush trying to bring more and more power into the executive branch and not go through Congress at all. And that's what I intend to reverse when I'm President of the United States of America. I can't wait for Congress to do its job. So where they won't act, I will. And I've told my administration, we're going to look every single day to figure out what we can do without Congress. What can we do without They will not work in my White House, and they will not drown out the voices of the American people when I am president. Take, tell the lobbyists in Washington that their days of setting the agenda are over. They, they have not funded my campaign. They will not work in my White House. Just this weekend, the New York Times published a list of names, a rather long list of names, of people who are working on Obama's transition team or who have accepted jobs in his White House who are either former lobbyists or who have close ties to lobbyists. And that means that no matter how we reform health care, we will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. No one will take it away, no matter what.
under my plan uh, of a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. But I think it is important for us to send some price signals to change behavior. Americans like to drive their big SUVs. They like to leave all the lights on in their house. We're going to have to change our habits. If we want to do something serious about that, it's not going to be painless. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. We can't uh, drive our SUVs and, you know, eat as much as we want and keep our homes on, you know, 72 degrees at all times, and, uh, whether we're living in a desert or we're living in the tundra, and, and then just expect that every other country is going to say, okay, you know, you guys go ahead and keep on using 25% of the world's energy, even though you only account for 3% of the population, and we'll, we'll be fine. Don't worry about us. That, that, that's, not, that's not leadership. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America.